Greetings and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Run and today we're playing as Eden. We're off to a very good start here and when I say a very good start I really mean a phenomenal start. I don't think I've ever had a stronger start uh, in a daily run except maybe for some curated dailies which just start you out with really powerful items. But Mob's Knife and the Nail on your very first items with actually pretty decent stats, that is not a bad deal at all. And you can see that we're pretty much uh, going through these enemies and rooms and just clearing them without a problem. So uh, what, what, do we, what do we have to worry about? on the run like this. Well, not much, because the nail does kind of provide you that initial heart, uh, soul heart protection, which just makes it that much more likely that you're gonna get your first devil deal, and that is important for several reasons. Of course, we don't need any good items out of it, but getting that first devil deal means we we don't have to take the item, which just makes it that more likely that we're gonna get an angel deal later on, and of course then we can fight the angel statues to hopefully get even more points. And that was exactly the plan I was going for here, and it, my decision was made even easier by the fact uh, that the devil deal didn't contain any good items at all, so the razor blade obviously isn't that good in this situation. So I just knew that it was, I, I hope that this was gonna be an angel deal run where I, I'll hopefully kill as many angels as possible and just really get a lot of points that way. As it turned out, I did find Spirit of the Night later on and I felt like that was a bit too good of an item with mom's knife uh, to, to, to let go or pass up by so I just decided to pick it up even if I uh, did lose my angel deal, not precedent, but my angel deal chance, so uh, it's, it's a decision, maybe a strategical one, I don't know if it's the right idea in this particular daily, just because of how strong it is, uh, but I feel like it's, it's a strategy in some regard, and I feel like Spirit of Night is very important if you want to minimize your damage, so essentially what I'm trying to say is that I feel like the, the damage avoided with Spirit of the Night is gonna be more beneficial to me, or at least I will lose less points, uh, than I would have received if I did go the angel deal route and then of course killed them that way. Uh, maybe this is not this is not like fact. This is just my anecdotal thoughts and evidence. Uh, but I feel like if, if it does save you from like two hits of damage, it's already pretty much worth it because the chances of you f fighting more than two angel statues on any given run aren't that high at all. And the fact that we already missed one at this point and that the fourth floor teleported us directly to the devil deal just kind of reinforces that belief. So I just felt like maybe it's not a good idea. Uh, to stick with it even further, even though it would give me something like 500 or maybe 600 points in total. Uh, with Mom's Knife, obviously, we have a big problem that you're very much stuck to the cardinal directions. You have to shoot in the four directions that you have, and if there are a lot of enemies in the floor because of the small hitbox, it's actually it's actually quite hard to hit them, and because of that, you need some way to dodge damage or at least avoid it in some way. And obviously, having a lot of speed is really important, and that's why we have uh, Roid Rage and the Halo and things like that, and that just allows us to maneuver a little bit better, but also having flight uh, allows us to go over chasms and then essentially we can take all of our time to kill enemies without any worries of getting hit ourselves and that's uh, the main reason why I think that flight is such a good idea in this scenario. So uh, now that we, that we have all of that, of course we got rid of the nail early on, I did start saying how good of an item it is because it does give you uh, that initial protection, but what it also gives you is an ability to kill and destroy rocks, not kill, obviously, destroy rocks, open them up to hopefully get something better out of them. And in a lot of cases that's useless because you're not gonna find a crawl space, but very early on when you don't have a lot of bombs, uh, you don't need to use, or even if you do, you don't need to use your very precious bombs on tinder drugs because you can just pop the nail and get some spirit hearts that way, and of course that, that does just increase your chances of getting that devil deal. And it's such a great thing that, that to start out with because it does a, it, it makes it a lot easier. So if this was the same run and we had mom's life, but we only had one red held, I feel like this would be immediately much more tense and much more dangerous because of course with mom's life, even though it's a really strong item, there's still the potential to get hit in a lot of cases. And when you don't have that extra added level of protection, it goes from, okay, we just need to survive three runs and then we can pop off when we get some health, as opposed to this scenario where we just started out and you know that this was a one run from the very start. And I, I kind of enjoy those runs and especially because I think I've said this a few times now, but especially because some of these dailies have been pretty bad and I feel like Afterbird Plus has been quite mean to us, getting a strong daily which allows us to, to really take advantage of the good items of the game is, is, a real, is really refreshing. And I really feel like these dailies are more fair than any others because suddenly it's not really about how well can you break the game, how lucky have you gotten. We all start out with the same layout and we all start with the same items and we're all very strong naturally from the very start and that just allows us to really pop off and, and do our thing. So now it's all about playing well, taking every, everything to our advantage, trying to go as fast as possible and taking the least damage as possible. And I feel like... 
Uh, those are the important skills, or at least the skills that should be measured or uh, should be more important than they necessarily are. Obviously, they are important, but I would say that the weights on them with how they correlate to the final score are a bit odd, but obviously we've had this discussion before. But it just it's such a... I like the dailies like this, and I did enjoy this one for what it was, especially when I saw Eden. I know this, this can go either in two ways. It can either be a really, really good daily, or it can turn to be a not-so-good one. And luckily, it was, it was the, the, the first choice. Uh, so later on, uh, we did get rid of the nail, even though it would probably be still a pretty decent get, but just because I felt like I was so strong, I didn't. I don't really need the spirit hearts, and also the damage is negligible that you get from using it. It's useful, but it's not really that useful later on in the game, so I did replace it with the first breaking item, so to say. Uh, that I found, and that's the deck of cards. The deck of cards is so good, because not only does it allow you to uh, essentially get cards, and because of that you can find things like the judgment cards or the slot machines and you can place them down in the dark room and blow them up to get more items you can reroll those items to hopefully get other breaking items so forget me now or maybe the blank card that just allows you to get a lot of consumables uh but it does allow you to get those two of clubs and two of diamonds cards and i felt like that's what's important in this case i knew that i wasn't probably going to break the game because it's a bit tedious and it does take a long time but i did feel like maybe it's a good idea to to capitalize on that opportunity to try to get at least 99 of every consumable at least to put me up there with the people who did break the game and or maybe who took more time to break the game but obviously if i was just going for the easy choice here i would have just picked up the jar and then broke with that and that would have netted me a lot of points and probably a really really high score in the end but as it turned out uh, i'm still satisfied with my decision because it did allow me to use the teleport cards very efficiently and i feel like if i didn't have them i would be kind of stranded for time obviously i would have had to miss uh, more rooms, my exploration bonus would be over overall a bit worse, so I guess it's also good in that sense. So I can't harp on it too much, it's one of those items which doesn't seem to do much, but if you know what you're doing with the cards, it can end up proving to be really, really useful. So um, maybe a, a bummer here is that we found the Forget Me Now, and the Forget Me Now, obviously I said that I would prefer to have it, it it's a really good item, essentially it's pretty much a needed item if you want to get a really high score in this daily. Uh, but for it to show so, so early on just means I really can't utilize the deck of cards uh, to its fullest effect, especially later on as we go into the dark room and troll and things like that. It would be really useful to have it, not only because you have the cards which help you with off offense, but you also get cards that help you with mapping, exploration, things like that. And that just allows you to, to be a little bit safer, be a little more methodical, which means you save points on less damage, and of course you save points that, because you don't have to backtrack as much, so all of those things are just, I guess, quality of life cards, and not having them is a bit of a bummer, but obviously having the Forget Me Now this net us with like 2,000 or maybe even 3,000 points more in total, and I was debating on when to use it. Should I use it in show? Or should we use it in the dark room? And obviously it would be the right the right decision is to use it in the dark room because that floor tends to be larger. You can fight Mega Saturn twice, and I think that's gonna give you more points than just using it in the show. Uh, but the dark room is actually su su such a hard floor that I feel like uh, uh, I feel like I shouldn't. I feel like I overestimate my abilities. Obviously this is a really really good st strong run, but if you face two adversaries or maybe some combination of enemies which drop troll bombs, there's really no way for us to dodge them, and because of that we're left in a position where we have to rely on both our dodging skills and our damage kind of gets true, and the chances of us getting hit are actually quite high, so that means that using it the forget me now on the dark room because it tends to be so much harder if you're not that good of a player like i feel i'm not in some cases uh, i take a lot of damage and it can end up being not worth it you can actually lose more points by taking damage and you gain by exploration bonus and you only need to take like five hits of damage uh, to negate all of the exploration bonus that you're gonna get out of just going back and forth and obviously that's a big shame because you want to maximize everything that you possibly can so losing five thousand points or maybe three thousand points where you get like 3,000 points back, it just, it's just a waste of time, because then you're losing on time bonus, and that's obviously not something that you want to do. So my first run through uh, the Dark Room was actually quite unsuccessful, I did get hit a few too many times, and I did lose quite a bit of points. I was a bit disappointed, because like I said before, this seemed like a really, really promising run, and I thought I'm gonna have really a lot of points, and I was gonna be able to go from there. But my second run of the Dark Room, after I've used the Forget Me Now, proved to be much more successful. I don't think I've even got hit once, and I did get like something like 2,000 points in total, which is, which is decent, and that did allow me, I think, uh, to rank a little bit better in the end. Luckily, the rooms weren't as difficult. There still were, were some annoying rooms, but the second run uh, through the dark room did prove to be just a lot more useful. And maybe the most annoying thing in the dark room are not even the bosses or maybe the annoying enemies. It's just that 
it's unpredictable and that you never know what you're gonna get. If you know what the room layout is, as soon as you enter the room, that's gonna that could be quite useful. And you can cheese it because you can enter the room and you can instantly pause to assess the situation and then do something uh, else on top of that. But obviously I'm not that... I, I feel like that's a bit tedious, so I don't really want to do that. Uh, but when you enter a room and you have like three big reds dropping troll bombs, you never know how long those troll bombs are gonna take to explode. Obviously you don't know in what direction to run because if you run in one direction, maybe he's gonna drop a bomb from the other direction and it's just a mess and you just end up taking more damage and you probably need to and it just creates this atmosphere where uh, you feel like you need to explore to maximize your points but at the same time you know that you're not playing that well and you're losing more points than you're getting so you know logically you should just give up uh, and go back to fight Mega Satan, but the prospect of getting more points by exploration is too good and too nice, so you decide to explore even a bit more. But then, of course, you lose more points because uh, the, the rooms tend to be really, really hard. Uh, so, we didn't make it to Mega Satan, we are fighting him right now. I'm saving my Algis rune for the uh, third or the fourth wave of uh, this uh, Sin Sin waves or whatever essentially there are four uh sins the gluttony one the, the pride one and the slot one and the greed one and when that happens i just pop my algae's room get in there try to kill them as fast as possible and my strategy from now is just try to rush mega satan down and just kill him as fast as possible because we have triple shot we also have uh the book of transformation which means that sometimes we shoot five shots we're actually dealing a lot of damage and we're pretty much melting each of his phases in in like three seconds. The longest thing we have to wait for is his animation of changing. I went back, back, I backed off just because I was afraid that the shield was gonna run off, but you can see it was really, really tight here. I wasn't sure I was gonna make it, uh, but I was dedicated because even if I do take one hit of damage, I feel like that would be worth it in some case because going back, back at it, I think would result in more than one hit of damage because I would have to kind of go through those stairs and that can be quite difficult when you have very low range. So we did beat Mega Satan, we have 54,000 points, which is obviously very good. A depression bonus through the roof, uh, we did, did do two extra floors on top of that. Our damage quality is a bit on the high side, which is a bit disappointing, and that was mainly due to that first run uh, to uh, the dark room. But also, I did take a lot of damage on the harsh fight. For some reason, he was really, really mean today. Just did a lot of different attacks, and I think because of my high, high damage quality, just made him go through the phases much faster, and he just started doing some random attacks, which he usually doesn't do, and it was quite hard to dodge. But overall, a really enjoyable daily with really high prospects, and there are people who've actually reached 65,000 points and above just because of how powerful this was. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and I hope to see you next time.